Warning, this video may contain spoilers. These may reveal critical parts of the game's storyline. If you don't wish to see these, stop watching now. Hello again, my friends. Eric Pearson here, and it's been a while since I've shared with you any playthroughs of Space Crew, but they've made some significant improvements to the game that I'd like to share with you. This begins a set of playthroughs in which I show you the final four missions of the game. So, this is another spoiler alert if you didn't see the first one. If you don't want to see how the game ends, stop watching now. Okay, so now that I've gotten that out of the way, let me show you around a few things. First, I want to share with you some changes I've made to the ship. It's no longer the Irma Felna. I've now renamed it the Unstoppable, and in honor of my late father, I've painted it orange, his favorite color. So let me show you the weapons that we've got. In the front, we've got a combination plasma cannon and rail gun. In the back, we have a plasma cannon and missile launcher, and the missile launcher is a Mark III, so a volley of eight missiles at once. So these two weapons combined make for a very effective fly swatter. And then on the side, believe it or not, I've got more missiles, left and right. So it's an interesting and different kind of gameplay from when I had the chain guns, but uh, it's, it's still a pretty effective way to go. And I maxed out on armor, engines, shields, you name it. So let me share with you a couple of things about the crew gear. Now, one thing I did a little differently this time is that our engineer, Tiza Powell, has magnetic boots. So, I've got the powered gravity boots because if anything goes wrong with the gravity system, it makes it easier for her to move to the gravity generator and make repairs. It also makes it easier for her to go out and make repairs on the engines in flight because there are actually steps leading from the airlock up to the engine nacelles. Now, one thing I want to change all around, um, I'm going to do custom loadout for the headgear since these are the final missions. I want to give my crew a little more protection so everybody's getting a Mark III battle helmet. So, congratulations. All right, so now that we've discussed all of that, I want to begin the next mission. I'll also point out that I have eliminated all of the Phasmid champions, so they shouldn't be giving us any trouble. So here we go. An exoplanet has been detected deep in the nebulous Delta Quadrant. This could be it. Locate the planet and scan its surface. So, here we go. Okay, one thing I'm going to do, this is one of the changes they made to the game, I'm going to take Meyer here and move her to the front gunner station. If I hit E on the keyboard, I can save this default because she's more effective on the front guns than at security most of the time. Okay, so let's navigate to the fastest route. I know the faster route invites more risk, harder battles, but we're tough. We can take it. All right. Let's get our bearings here. Okay, the central binary star system. Okay, let's get everybody ready because enemies are incoming. So, focus fire and boost on our four gunners. And, hey, Powell, how about you give us a boost on shields, weapons, and engines? So, this is it. The other thing I want to point out is that for uh, multi-weapon stations, 
you can set an auto switch. Like, for example, Walker has auto switch enabled, which means that she will automatically toggle between different weapon types depending on what she's firing at. We got a Roadhog in front of us. Beep beep, get out of the way. Well, it looks like we lost a chunk of armor there, but we're still okay. Okay, time to charge the hyperdrive. And do way we go. Okay, time to head for the Delta Quadrant. More company. One thing I'm keeping an eye out for, and I think we've got one coming, is boarding craft. I learned later on that boarding craft you can evade by having your pilot take evasive action. That's a lesson I wish I'd applied sooner. Another hacker ship. Oh, yeah, that's that's a boarding ship. Okay, get ready to do evasive action. Wait for it. Okay, looks like we took him out before we needed to. Yes, I could call for help, but I'm not sure we need to right now. Alright. Doing good. Time to charge up the hyperdrive. I mean, I know our shields are taking a beating, but our armor is still fairly intact. A dropped cargo pod. Okay. Yeah, for a little variety we'll do that, but before I do that, Powell needs to do some repairs get on the tractor beam station. Meyer, your head of security. Let's grab a rifle and head to the room adjacent to the cargo hold. Because oftentimes we bring things aboard and it winds up being an attempt at alien inf infiltration. And what's really freaky is sometimes the inv invader doesn't come out until a few minutes afterward, so I gotta watch out for that. Okay, I'm gonna have Meyer wait there a bit. Oh. 
Oh, we got company. Aha! See, I called it. Quick, fix the reactor. Okay, Myers, store your rifle and get back on get back on the front gun. See what I mean? You can see how those missiles make for a powerful deterrent. Oh yeah, traffic's getting a little heavy now. Okay, I got an idea. Chavez, give us a juice on the shields, please. Thank you. That's why I have Chavez cross-trained in the security matters. Whoa! Oxygen system's got a problem. Gotta fix that. I should point out that uh, Powell has special engineering gloves to make repairs even faster. Okay, looks like everybody's still in pretty good health. I think having those stronger helmets is helping. Ooh, pretty crystals. I don't want to use my special skills just yet. We might need them later. Oh boy. Got some radioactive mines. Uh... Oh, that was a close one. Almost got boarded again. Almost had to trigger evasive again. Okay, are we recharged on that special ability? Let's find out. Yes. Well, we don't need it now. <laughs> oh. Uh-oh. We got an engine that needs repair. Okay, pal, put on your suit. Go out and fix that. Now watch what I mean about pal goes up the stairs instead of floating. Okay, thank you very much. Go inside, stow your suit. 
See, right down the stairs. Do do. All right. Okay, there's the there is the exoplanet. So now the big question is, is this the Phasmid homeworld? Okay, I don't see any enemies incoming. If we do, I may be able to activate stealth mode to buy us a little time. Okay, we're almost in scanning range. Okay, let's scan it. Okay, this is definitely the definitely the Phasmid homeworld. Okay. Chavez. Stephanie, get on stealth mode. So now we're in stealth mode for the next 40 seconds. Let's see, can we sneak out? seconds. See ya. Bye-bye. Okay, time to break out the big guns. Focus fire and boost on all my gunners. Pal, could you please give us a boost? Thank you. And it looks like we got a boarding craft. We got another one coming in. Evasive. Can't grab on if we're swinging and swaying.
Looks like we got a mine layer. Better watch out for that. Looks like we got one gunship left. We've got an unstable wormhole that we might be able to use to take a shortcut home. So this is a good chance to demonstrate one of the other upgrades they made to the game. Is you now have the ability to do an auto hack if you level up your crew enough. So I'm going to show this now. That was pretty good. Sometimes... Sometimes the wormhole is still a little unstable. But we were lucky that time. Okay, once again activating focus, fire, and boost. Okay, and we're back home. Well done. Did a good job, pal. Take five. Okay, so we've investigated the exoplanet. And we've investigated the cargo pod. And all of our characters are leveled up to the max ability, so we're good there. 
Okay, so we have positively located the Phasmid homeworld. So join me next time as I continue demonstrating the final missions of Space Crew. Eric Pearson, signing off.